Perfect. So we got the speed done. We got the primary fire. Now we want to move over to the secondary fire, which is Roadhog. Well, the player presses right click and it spawns a big projectile, which then, after 9 meters, it blows up and it spawns the regular projectiles. So, the way we're going to do this is let's first copy paste the first projectile and it already puts the second number to it we're gonna open this we're gonna take the mesh and this is just for visuals I want to first make the collision radius a little bit bigger let's see 22 and then we make our mesh match that same collision radius Let's see if there's another material we can use just to distinguish. Uh, leather red. Let's see how this looks. It's taking a little bit. Okay, so that's our right click projectile. Now let's set the speed. So we go over to projectile and to our speed the secondary fire goes at hmm. let me quickly check the wiki see what the actual values are okay so the secondary fire is basically again 57 meters per second same speed as the primary fire so we're good okay we go back here and we're gonna do another custom event this is gonna be called event shoot secondary projectile and we're gonna do some custom logic on the secondary projectile to make it blow up and then spawn the other projectiles okay so on this we want to spawn actor And we want to spawn our secondary projectile. Now, I believe we should make this into a function or a macro. Let's use a macro or a pure function. Yeah, pure function it is, which is basically an inline function on C++. Uh, get projectile transform. And in here, we're gonna just copy paste all this messy code we just did before and we're gonna put it here and we're gonna set a return value so we click here output projectile location transform and that's gonna return a transform which is this and make sure you click on pure which I'll explain what that does what is going on okay yeah let's drop this so you see you don't get the white connection nodes so basically let's look over the difference quick okay so get projectile transform function let's uncheck pure and let's look at our function so you see it has the white nodes to connect but if we make it into a pure function an inline function we can basically call it without connecting it to any to another white node and that's just better for getting values we're gonna connect this transform here yep and now the code looks way cleaner even though the function is messy let's connect that there and connect this here actually 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 the second projectile doesn't have any randomization patterns to its transform so we can just 
copy the default transform delete this paste this over here because it always gonna spawn straight that's how it works with the secondary fire very projectile okay should work nicely now let's see how it works now so primary fire oh I haven't connected secondary fire yet derp so input action secondary fire already there if you don't have this just put it in your project settings or just input right click so input secondary fire let's put it right here input secondary fire we also want to play a montage with our animations so we connect this here connect that there we also want to play the sound and we want to shoot secondary projectile connect this here there 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 it, that's this so now it should work so primary fire secondary fire uh, it's not taking the rotation value derp okay now we need to do the custom logic for the secondary projectile so basically when the projectile spawns so event begin play so when the projectile spawns and we travel 900 unreal units I think let's see how we're gonna approach this we basically need to track the amount of units traveled should do this on tick Let me take a quick break, let me see the best method, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so here's how it's going to work. First, we're going to create a vector variable, and we're going to call it initial location. When the projectile spawns, we're going to set that variable with our location, so get actor location. Now on the tick, we're going to track how many units the projectile has traveled. So we're going to take get actor location and initial location. So we're going to do, we're going to subtract our current location by our initial location. Then we're going to get the length, the vector length. And to see if that works, we're going to print it, print the value quickly. Connect that here. Let's see how that works. Okay, so you can see on the top left, the units the projectile has traveled. So the secondary projectile should explode after traveling 900 unreal units. Well, basically 9 meters which transforms into 900 centimeters which are basically unreal units so this is how we're gonna do it we're gonna create a bool and we're gonna call this pass reach location whatever put whatever name you want so if the length is above or equal 900 centimeters then once that happens we want to and first let's drag this here put and has reach location is not which is false 
then set has reached location to true so because this is running on tick and we don't want the projectile to spawn a bunch of other smaller projectiles every single tick so this will ensure that it only runs one time after reaching the location we want to spawn let's copy it over this we want to spawn our first projectile and then destroy this projectile and the spawn transform should be get actor transform let's see if that works if it goes to the like the same direction the projectiles is headed always spawn ignore collisions let's see if that works so we got a primary fire hey we forgot to spawn the 25 projectiles okay and we forgot to randomize it derp okay let's do this all over again so we're gonna do another messy implementation we're gonna copy this which already works we're gonna put it over in a custom event or a function get primary project tau transform so messy but it works we're gonna put that there weapon spread them out we're gonna create a variable out of that let's see okay let's put it 15 now location get actor location and Let's do the output, the return value, which is going to be a transform projectile transform. Let's connect that there. Let's make sure it's a pure function. Let's drop it here. Wait, first for loop, because we want to spawn 25 projectiles. Zero. Uh, 24 projectile transform and we don't want to destroy 25 times we want to destroy after the loop is done so this should work let's see how it works primary secondary fire Okay, so we need to copy over the, the forward vector of get forward, no, get rotation, get actor rotation, get forward. Oh, no wonder. Let's connect that there. Let's see how it works. There we go. So we got Roadhog's primary secondary fire. Primary fire. Secondary fire. Using the exact values Overwatch uses. So this is basically an exact replica except the the spread pattern because I'm pretty sure they use a specific code to randomize the spread how they want it so it it's a little bit consistent like how they do the the shotgun spread in Gears of War games nowadays or they just randomize it like I did but whatever we got that done. 
now we need to do the let's first do the health the HUD part just so we have a visual representation of the character's health when we're gonna do the the healing ability which is E the breather so let's do that first thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please smash that subscribe button and follow me on my social media especially Instagram see you on the next one